Hi, and welcome to this episode in our Vitamin Z's series, Yoga for Bedtime. Today's class, you can see I did unroll my mat because we'll be, we'll be a little bit more up on our feet. I like a little more traction, especially when I'm in down dog, so I can push and stretch a little extra. Totally optional. And then also maybe a couple pair of blocks and a yoga strap or perhaps a stretchy band or even a scarf, whatever you have nearby. As always, you can do this entire class without any props whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and get started right away in our wide-legged child's pose. So finding ourselves into the center of our mat, let's go ahead and bring our knees as wide apart, maybe as wide as the mat, however you feel comfortable, draw the big toes together and then start to settle the hips back down towards the heels. Know that the hips don't need to reach the heels. We're just kind of resting back towards that direction, using this posture to ease into the hips and also to give a little stretch in the low back. You can extend the arms out long. And start to bring your awareness into the breath as we settle in and prepare for our bedtime journey, creating our good habits before we hop into bed. We want to start to slow down the body and the mind. And to really put that in gear, we just need to start focusing on the breath and the inhales and the exhales. As we allow the breath to move freely through the body, Explore where the breath travels. Take your time filling up the lungs. Allow the re release of the breath to be gentle. No need to force the breath. When you're ready, we're going to slowly lift the hips up, coming into a tabletop, finding our cat and cows. I'm a big believer in exploring movement within our cat and cows, but we can start simply by taking an inhale and starting to lift the chest, lift the gaze at the same time, lift the tailbone as the belly drops. And then exhale, we start to round, pushing into the mat, allowing the shoulders to spread apart gazing behind you and then start to tuck the tailbone really draw the navel in pausing slowly inhale finding your cow pose and then moving back and forth between your cat and your cow using your breath feel free to stop in one position or maybe halfway through position if you feel anything that feels a little sticky those little sticking points that we find within our upper back maybe even into the low back and then sometimes it also feels good to move a little differently in your cat and cows if you feel like you want to shift from left to right push deeply into one hand to the other or maybe draw into some barrel rolls as you come into cat and cow drawing big circles with the chest as you lower and then rise up. And just remember if you are taking some movements, you may want to reverse the direction so that you're exploring all sides of the body. and allow the breath to keep moving. When you're ready, tuck the toes. We'll push back into a downward facing dog. Pushing back, lifting the tailbone up to the sky. This doesn't need to be the fullest version of your downward facing dog. You can have a very nice bent knee to start with. We're gonna go ahead and pedal it out. Just go ahead and find some movement here just as you did in your cat and cow. And then from our downward facing dog, find your version of downward facing dog for a moment will come to stillness. 
Allow the head to drop in between the fore- the upper arms. Press down. Push firmly into the mat. Finding a great big stretch as you draw the knee cup, kneecaps up. Firm into the upper thighs. And from our downward facing dog, we're going to keep the upper body the way it is. We're going to start to stretch into the ankles, into the calves. By bending the knees, bend, 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 bend the knees. And maybe you only come a little ways. Maybe you take the knees almost all the way to the mat without touching, hovering the knees. And then slowly straighten the legs. So as you see, my upper body didn't move at all. I'm just moving the legs by bending the knees, keeping all of the toes firmly planted onto the mat, bending the knees, still pushing into the mat, and then straighten the legs. Again, just straighten the legs. The heels can hover if we're not quite there yet. We're going to bend the knees and then straighten. Let's take one more. Bend, 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 bend. And then straighten the legs. Very good. From here, we're going to tiptoe our way up to the top of the mat. You can go very slowly. Tiptoe, tiptoe, make your way up. Maybe you can walk all the way up in between the fingertips. And then from here, we're going to open the feet up a little wider than the hips. Turn the toes out at a diagonal. This is where you will want to grab your blocks. Again, you can do this completely without blocks, but we're gonna set the blocks underneath our tailbone and come into a yogi squat. One block, two blocks, or no blocks, wherever you're at. But to get started, especially if we're gonna come into preparing ourselves for bedtime, feel free to use the liberty of having your props with you and giving your chance to fully relax. We don't want this to be a full-on workout right before bed. So wherever you're at, find your yogi squat, settle, open the knees up nice and wide, allow the arms to come to the inside of the knees, and for now we're just going to rest in our squat. And we're going to round the upper body, allow the head and the neck to hang. So just fully resting into the hips. And now we're giving the neck a little chance to release. Maybe give a little side-to-side -side turn of the neck. Like you're, you're shaking the head, no. As you're in this forward fold, remember to keep the breath going. Inhale through the nose. Allow the breath to travel all the way down. Feel the shoulders broaden as you inhale, spread across the back. Maybe as you exhale, feel the upper body sink a little deeper. On your next breath, let's inhale up. We're going to stay in our yogi squat. This time we're going to bring the elbows into the inside of the knees and the hands to prayer. Start to lift the chest so that we're nice and proud in our yogi squat. Lifting the heart center to the thumbs. Bring the shoulders down and away from the ears and the collarbone is nice and wide. From here, we're going to start to drive the knees into the elbows. Press the knees in. Just for five, four, three, two, one. Relax that grip that you have into the hips. Take a breath. And at this point, we're going to actually try to drive the knees away from the elbows. They may not separate or probably still be touching, but we're trying to pull the knees apart to the outside edge of the mat, using the active strength of our hips, driving those knees away from each other for five, four, three, two, one, and go ahead and relax the hips. The knees should naturally come back into the elbows. 
At this point, we can use the elbows to, a little, to do a little bit of the stretch, becoming more passive in our stretch. Very good. Now, if you're practicing with a block, go ahead and lift the tailbone up off of the block. We're now balancing slightly on our feet. If you can, try to draw the feet back in so that they're parallel and then also about hip width distance apart. So from here, we're in this very low squatting position. We're not going to stay here very long. We're going to come up onto the balls of the feet into a toe stand hanging out in our toe stand so that our knees are hovering now and then we're just on the balls of the feet. Again, you can have your blocks nearby. We don't want to make this too much right before bed. So I like to have the blocks here so that we can have more passive stretching, more relaxed stretching before we go ahead and prepare ourselves for a restful night's sleep. Stretching into the bottoms of the feet, especially if you've been on your feet all day or maybe you have foot or ankle injuries that you're still trying to recover from, such as I do. Taking care of our feet is still a journey and something that's often forgotten. So just getting a little stretch and toe stand. Now from your toe stand, we're gonna go ahead and lower the knees down to the earth. Go ahead and use your blocks or if you have your hands down onto the mat and allow the knees to come down to the mat. I'm going to readjust myself so I scoop back just a little bit further. You can stay right where you're at if you're comfortable. And then coming into a toe stretch. This is really intense. Of course, you can stay above your heels. That will have most of the weight right back onto your toes. And if that's too much, then we start to take some of the weight off and lean forward, whether your hands are onto the mat or onto a pair of blocks. So just try to keep all of those toes, all 10 toes tucked underneath you so that they're all getting some use out of that stretch. And we're gonna breathe here. Relax the face, relax the shoulders. Allow the upper t body to remain soft as you breathe through this tense, uh, this stretch, which I know can be very tensing and want to make the rest of the body try to react. From here, let's shift forward, take the weight off of the heels and then untuck the toes. We'll sit back down onto the heels. So stretching into the top of the foot. You can stay right here if this feels good. You can also increase the stretch by picking up one knee at a time. Again, keeping the toes connected to the mat. Slowly stretching into the top of the feet. You can work one knee at a time. If you feel like you would like to take a balance and you enjoy the stretch in the tops of the feet, you can bring both of the knees up, maybe even take the hands up off of the mat and bring them to prayer center. When you're ready, softly lower the knees back down to the earth. You can come up to a tabletop for a moment. Maybe go ahead and draw some circles with each ankle. Make sure to take both directions. And you could even tap the tops of the feet to the mat. Gently release the blood flow into the feet. From here, we're gonna sit back down onto the heels, coming into a kneeling position. And we're gonna do some stretching into the upper body. We'll take the hands out in front of us, palms facing forward, fingertips facing up. And from here, just check the shoulders so that they're moving down and away from the ears. We're gonna to start to move into the upper body. We'll start to pin the shoulder blades back like we're trying to pinch a pencil or a pen in between the shoulders. So we're drawing the shoulder blades together and then go ahead and push forward. We're still upright, but now we're rounding and separating the shoulder blades, stretching into the upper back. Let's draw the shoulder blades together. 
and then go ahead and spread the shoulder blades apart pressing the hands forward staying nice and upright and then we'll draw the shoulder blades together push the hands forward separate really 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 round to the upper back feel a nice stretch one more time draw the shoulder blades together and then let's press the hands forward release the hands down to your side from here we're going to take some shoulder rotations so we'll go ahead and grab our strap if you have one again if you don't have a strap you don't need one you can t just take nice big shoulder rotations drawing the shoulders up trying to stay nice and upright in the torso so that we're not leaning forward or moving ourselves our whole body with the rotation like we're taking really really big circles with the arms and then same way you will reverse the direction when we reverse our direction with the strap and when you're ready if you have a strap go ahead and grab it you hold it out in front of you you might have to adjust the distance that your hands are uh, apart the closer they are together the much harder it will be it will require very very open shoulders so further apart will make it a little easier so if we want to just create a nice gentle stretch into the shoulders take it easy on yourself we're going to go ahead and hold the hands out in front of us and on the inhale we're going to draw the arms up and maybe to the back if they don't come all the way down behind you that's fine be gentle be slow as you work these rotations and if you don't have a strap just go ahead and work those nice big arm circles we're going to go ahead and keep breathing inhale maybe as you come back and draw the arms behind you and then exhale as you bring the arms forward up and around stretching into the upper body especially into the front of the shoulder as you feel the arms go back and then bring them up and in front of you does require some control and this can be quite challenging some of us are more open naturally so it really doesn't matter where your hands are at on that strap just go into what you need for yourself we'll take one more going back and then we'll bring the arms forward if you're using your strap you can go ahead and set that to the side from here we'll bring the hands behind us interlace the fingers and then draw the knuckles down and towards the mat at the same time think about lifting the chest up and towards the sky maybe the gaze comes back protect the neck you don't need to drop it all the way back but we're going to reach those knuckles down 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 and from here maybe if you want to take a little side body lean you can draw the knuckles over knuckles over to the left or maybe to the right bring them back to center inhale keep the hands clasped and we're going to forward fold draw the knuckles up towards the sky same thing here maybe draw the hands to the right and then to the left just moving at this position exploring some movement it's always good to be little explorers in our practice and keep things new for us from here we're going to release the hands draw them down to the mat and we're going to walk ourselves out onto our bellies finding our broken wing yin yoga pose one final stretch into the shoulders and the upper body before we close out our class we'll bring the arms into either a t-shape or a bent elbow cactus shape i prefer the bent elbow shape i find that if i get more out of it a little bit more stretch into the front of the shoulder so we're going to lie down bend the right arm or keep it straight if that feels better for you the right side of the face goes to the mat bring the left hand down just underneath the shoulder so you can use that for leverage to roll onto your side maybe bring the left leg up above the right or place that left foot behind you and then we're going to go ahead and control the, the depth of this stretch by how much we lean back to the right
very slowly. Let's come through center. And we're going to take that now onto the left side, either bending the left elbow or keeping it straight. Come onto the left side of the face. Draw the right hand just underneath the right armpit so that you can control the roll over to the left. Maybe bring the right foot behind you. Enjoying this stretch in the front of the chest and in the front of the shoulder. Slowly start to unwind, come onto your belly. And we'll take our final pose, a Shavasana on our bellies by allowing our forehead to come to the back of our hands. Taking a short rest here, especially since we're just preparing for bedtime, we don't wanna to get too comfy cozy before we crawl into bed, but we're gonna go ahead and just relax the body after that short workout, our restful workout. The main intention of these classes are just to unwind the body and kind of break up some of the tightness that we create throughout the day. Allow that physical and that mental tension to release just with some gentle movement that we deserve after a long day. And to prepare ourselves for quality sleep in the hopes that we wake up refreshed and ready to start the next day anew. When you're ready, slowly lift up, place the hands underneath the shoulders, and we'll just go ahead and sit back onto the heels to close the class. As always, I'm so thankful to have you here joining our class. I hope you enjoy this series. Go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe for more series like this. And as always, classes every single week. I hope you have a great night. Make it a good one. Bye.